I'm obviously going to spend a lot of time actually demonstrating the lighting and shooting but before I do that I'm going to discuss the equipment you need and a good place to start is with the camera <laughs> so just what type of camera do you need for off-camera flash photography well you have to have a way of wirelessly firing the flash so your camera needs to have a, a hot shoe and although you won't be placing the flash on the camera the hot shoe is still required in order to fire the external flash all DSLRs have them most mirrorless cameras do too as well as many bridge and some of the more sophisticated compact cameras for this type of photography the best method for getting consistent accurate exposures is to use the manual exposure mode that is I won't be using aperture or shutter speed priority or the P mode Instead, I'll be using the manual mode, the M mode, and I'll explain why in a later lecture on exposure. But this does mean you're going to need a camera that allows you to set the aperture and shutter speed manually. And as far as I know, all DSLRs can do that, and probably most, if not all, mirrorless cameras too. Your point and shoot, maybe a bridge or compact camera, might well allow it too, but that's something you'll have to check for yourself. I'm sure most of you will already have a suitable camera, otherwise you probably wouldn't even be watching these videos. So you should all be set to go in that department. Now we come to the flashes, sometimes referred to as flash guns or speed lights. This type of photography does not require a super duper all singing and all dancing TTL flash. Those flashes, generally the manufacturer's own models, are great and they'll work beautifully here but if you don't already have one then you don't need to go out and buy one, they are expensive. The main thing we're looking for in the flash is the ability to set it to manual mode and to be able to adjust the power output up and down from the back of the flash. For example, in the flash's manual mode I might have it set to say half power and that might be too bright and cause an overexposure so then I might want to be able to hit a button on the back of the flash to make it go to say quarter power that also might be too bright so I should be able to lower the power even more to an eighth, a sixteenth, a thirty tooth and so and so on some flashes can only go as low as the thirty tooth power but some to sixty fourth and some can even go as low as the hundred and twenty eighth power 132 power is fine for what we're actually going to be doing. In fact, you might think that lower power, such as 120, 128th, would be useless, but it just provides a tiny wink of light, maybe for use if you're photographing something really close up. I sometimes use these, the manufacturer's own flashes, the Nikon SB600 and 800, both discontinued models now. The newer ones are the SB700 and 900. There's also the Canon equivalents, EX430, 580 and 600. Those type of flashes, known as dedicated flashes, generally cost in the region of two to three hundred pounds, depending on the model. If you've got one of those, you're in great shape, they'll work just fine. But if you're buying a flash specifically to do off-camera off flash, you don't need one, one that has the fancy ITTL or ETTL modes. Those features are great, but if you have them, I use them myself quite a bit, but for the type of photography I'm going to show you in this course, you only need a manual flash gun. And for those on a budget, that's good news, because you can buy the flashes you need for this for between 40 and 60 pounds. That's almost a quarter of the price of the higher end flashes. It means you can buy two or three of them. But I'll start off by using my manual Yongnuo 560 Mark II. This is a terrific flash, and Yongnuo are becoming very popular probably the leading brand in these types of flashes. The Mark II has now been replaced by the Mark III and I'll talk about the difference later on in the lecture on triggering the flashes. So I can recommend the Yongnuo's, in fact the day after I bought this, this one it fell from a height of about six foot onto the concrete floor through no fault of my own obviously. <laughs> no seriously I've forgotten to tighten it up on the stand Anyway, it bounced a couple of times, but it was fine. They're really very well built. Other manual flash flashes you might like to consider are the LumiPro LP180, the Niwa VK750 and Nissan, Nissan DI466. I haven't used any of those, but have heard good things about them. My own personal recommendation at the time of making this film in November 2014 is for the Yongnuo 560 Mark III. 
I've only actually used the non nuo ones, but see the shopping list supplementary material for a list of the other flashes that you might like to consider. Now, although all of these flashes vary on features and settings, the quality of light is the same. Because if you're firing through a 30-inch umbrella, no matter what flash you use, you'll get a 30-inch umbrella type of light. So the choice of flash can be a little overwhelming. If you have a Canon camera, you may prefer to go with a Canon flash. Same with Nikon or any of the other manufacturers. Or you might want to go with Canon or Nikon compatible flashes from the likes of Sigma, Sunpax or Metz. Some are built better than others, they may have slightly more or less output, but it doesn't really matter for this type of photography. Also, you may have an old basic external flash lying around, which you think may just do the job. But if it's very basic, it may not allow you to adjust the flash output, which is a deal breaker. Most flashes of this site, built, built of this size I should say, sorry, built within the last few years, will be fine though. By the way, the flashes do go through batteries fairly quickly. I always use the rechargeable ones, Nickel Metal Hydride, or NIMH for short. You can recharge these hundreds or even over a thousand times. One little niggle with them, by the way, is that they lose 4 to 5 percent of their charge every day, even if you're not using them. So make sure you charge them just before you want to use them. There's a, a new type of rechargeable battery called the Enerloop, invented by Sanyo, I believe, which holds their charge much like ordinary batteries, so you can charge them and leave them in a drawer for a while until you need them. That's all for now. See you in the next video.